The woman you see right here is so-called American feminist, journalist, and social and political activist Gloria Steinem, who became nationally recognized as a leader of and media spokeswoman for the women's liberation movement in the late 1960s and 1970s. But did you know she was working for the CIA? Wikipedia only pays a small amount of lip service to this little factoid, but the facts are that Miss Steinem became a media darling due to her connections to the CIA, and the feminist Ms. Magazine was funded by CIA money. In the 1970s, a radical feminist group called the Red Stockings claimed that before she became a feminist leader, she was spying on Marxist students in Europe and disrupting their meetings. Steinem was recruited by CIA's Cord Myers to direct an informal group of activists called the Independent Research Service. This was part of Myers' Congress for Cultural Freedom, which created magazines like Encounter and Partisan Review to promote a left liberal chic to oppose Marxism. Steinem attended communist-sponsored youth festivals in Europe, published a paper, reported on other participants, and helped to provoke riots. Gloria Steinem, who was from a poor and dysfunctional family and lived in a house without running water, was able to attend the elite and expensive Smith College. After she graduated, she spent two years in India spying for the CIA. She received a Chester Bowles Student Fellowship to study in India. This was a fellowship created by the CIA to cover Steinem's expenses in India. No one has received a Chester Bowles Student Fellowship either before or since Steinem received one. Commenting on the CIA-controlled student festivals organized by Gloria Steinem, Sheila Tobias, an unwitting participant on one such trip, who later taught women's studies at Cornell University, said the CIA was interested in spying on the American delegates to find out who in the United States was a Trotskyite or communist. So we were a front, as it turned out. Gloria Steinem's name keeps showing up in projects associated with CIA operations. For example, in the summer of 1959, just before John J. McCloy took his family for an extended trip to Europe, C.D. Jackson wrote to remind McCloy that later that summer, a World Youth Festival was scheduled to take place in Vienna. Jackson asked McCloy to contribute a propaganda article. The piece would appear in a daily newspaper to be published in Vienna in conjunction with the festival. McCloy agreed, and the article was published in five languages in a newspaper distributed by a 25-year-old Smith graduate named Gloria Steinem. When this covert operation was revealed by Ramparts magazine in 1967, Steinem told the New York Times that she approved the, uh, the agency's role. I was happy to find some liberals in government in those days who were far-sighted and cared enough to get Americans of all political views to the festival. Steinem's definition of a liberal then included such young men as Zbigniew Brzezinski, an assistant professor at Harvard. Steinem arranged to fund Brzezinski's uh, visit to the student festival. Brzezinski would later become the national security advisor to President Jimmy Carter, and he was the man who invented the so-called bear trap which suckered the Soviet Union into invading Afghanistan. Brzezinski was also the man who first organized and funded Osama bin Laden's jihad against the Soviets in Afghanistan. Gloria Steinem also identified and targeted Alice Walker in the early 1960s. She befriended Alice Walker and paid for Alice Walker to come to the CIA-manipulated student festival in Vienna. Alice Walker would later become the foremost writer of anti-black male hate books, all of which were funded by money funneled to her publishers by the CIA. Steinem has boasted in interviews with the New York Times and the Washington Post that her training with the CIA was good journalistic training because the CIA taught you to be accurate. This statement proves that Steinem was happy to collect money working for the CIA. Gloria Steinem dated J. Stanley Pottinger for nine years. Pottinger was in charge of sabotaging civil rights enforcement at the Justice Department. He was Assistant Ger Attorney General under President Nixon and President Ford. According to Donald Freed and Fred Landis in their book, Death in Washington, J. Stanley Pottinger also helped to cover up the assassinations of Martin Luther King and Orlando Letelier. Pottinger also publicly defended Gloria Steinem against charges of CIA involvement, which Steinem had already admitted. Why would a radical feminist like Gloria Steinem be anywhere near a guy like Pottinger unless she was a government employee herself? Steinem also dated Henry Kissinger, an international war criminal, establishment technocrat, and a longtime CIA operative for years. Why would a radical feminist date someone who was considered a mass murderer by everyone in the movement? 
When New York Times reporters confronted Steinem with documentation of her connections to the CIA and CIA funding of her various activities, Steinem remarked that she got caught because CIA wasn't tricky enough. Hinting that CIA should have made better use of front companies, Steinem remarked. The CIA's big mistake was not supplanting itself with private funds fast enough. By the time Steinem founded Ms. Magazine, the CIA had learned how to funnel money through private individuals and corporations. That's how Steinem was able to fund Ms. Magazine. Her CIA funding was so substantial that Steinem was able to do the unprecedented. She stopped accepting advertising for Ms. Magazine. She didn't need any more advertising because CIA money has been keeping her expensively produced magazine afloat from the very beginning. Gloria Steinem had the power to successfully censor three different publications, the book Feminist Revolution, a Village Voice article, and a New York Community newspaper article. All three publications documented Steinem's involvement with the CIA. Nevertheless, a story about Steinem's CIA connections appeared in the Village Voice on May 21, 1979. When Red Stockings tried to publish a book called Feminist Revolution with a chapter that detailed Steinem's CIA connections, Steinem and her powerful CIA-connected friends forced Random House to delete the chapter on Steinem. Nevertheless, the chapter on Steinem's CIA connections appeared in the Village Voice, but only after the Village Voice had been threatened by Steinem's lawyers. The book Feminist Revolution is still available. You can buy the censored version from Red Stockings for $8. For $4, or free if you buy a Feminist Revolution, you get the censored section which contains detailed material on Steinem's early work with the CIA, and an account of how this story was censored after originally being scheduled for publication. Who were the powerful people who put pressure on Random House, the, and the Village Voice, and Red Stockings on Steinem's behalf? Catherine Graham, publisher of the Washington Post, Graham is a known CIA agent, see book Catherine the Great by Deborah Davis, Franklin Uncle Thomas of the Ford Foundation. The Ford Foundation is a documented funnel for CIA funds and Warner Communications, a Ms. Magazine stockholder and CIA propaganda company. Since the middle of World War II, a U.S. intelligence establishment has spent billions of dollars researching mind control techniques and inventing mind control technology. Thousands of people were kidnapped, drugged, hypnotized, and tortured as part of the CIA's mind control research and field testing. Many of these victims began surfacing in the 1980s. These victims were having strange dreams and flashbacks. This was dangerous for the CIA because their mind control operations would be exposed. So the CIA created, funded, and controlled a number of organizations that floated the idea that these victims were suffering from strange dreams and flashbacks because they had been sexually abused by their parents as children and had repressed those memories. This would become the perfect way of misdirecting the search for who really victimized these people. Strangely enough, Gloria Steinem teamed up with Ted Gunderson to ferment the satanic child abuse hysteria as a way to help cover up the CIA's mind control experiments on human beings. In 1978, Gloria Steinem put a book called Black Macho and the Myth of the Superwoman on the cover of Ms. Magazine. The book was written by a black feminist and activist named Michelle Wallace who came out of nowhere. Wallace was in her early 20s at the time, yet she was being touted as the leader of black feminism. In the book, Wallace called abolitionists like Harriet Tubman and Sojourner T Truth ugly and stupid for supporting black men. She called black revolutionaries chauvinist macho pigs and advised black women to go it alone. Gloria Steinem said that Wallace's book would define the future of black relationships and she pushed hard to make sure the book received massive publicity. Gloria Steinem's work triggered a flood of hate black men books and films that continues to this day. Needless to say, some were quite suspicious of Ms. Magazine and Gloria Steinem. Why was Steinem sticking her nose into the affairs of the black community? So people started doing some research on Steinem. When it came out that Gloria Steinem was probably the ghost writer of the book with Michelle Wallace's name on it, Wallace had a nervous breakdown and went into hiding for two years. 